Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. So, resizable bar, or SAM as every enthusiastic AMD fan seems to call it, regardless of the platform and GPU used. I swear though, every CPU and GPU related video that I've published over the last year or so has had several dozen people commenting asking if SAM was enabled. Though some say resizable bar, which is the correct term when discussing Intel CPUs or Nvidia GPUs, as SAM is an AMD branding for resizable bar, which works when using an AMD CPU with an AMD GPU. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Gigabyte and their brand new range of Intel Z690 motherboards. With over two dozen models to pick from, Gigabyte has you covered. And for high-end enthusiast builds, there's the Z690 Aorus Master with its insane 19 plus 1 plus 2 direct digital VRM design. Or for more creative types, the Z690 ROG is an appealing option with its stacked I.O. Or for those of you on a tight budget, the Z690 UD is an exceptionally good value choice that's available in DDR4 and DDR5 versions. Also, Gigabyte has a competition running right now to win a free Aorus upgrade, so please check the link in the video description. Anyway, a surprising amount of emphasis from viewers has been placed on Resizable Bar. It seems to be all the rage right now. Now, I looked into Resizable Bar with the Radeon RX 6800 on our Ryzen 9 5950X test system back in January 2021, and found that while it did at times offer really nice performance gains, when testing a wide range of games, the performance uplift overall was very small, due to the feature doing very little for the bulk of the 36 games tested, and even reducing performance in a select few titles. And this prompted us to avoid testing with the resizable bar by default, along with a few other reasons that AMD fans have passionately rejected. However, two years later we have started testing CPUs with resizable bar enabled, as it really is a CPU slash platform feature, just as PCIe revisions are. However, for GPU reviews, we're still testing with resizable bar disabled, with the exception of our massive head-to-head -head benchmarks, and this is because not everyone has a Zen 3 or Elder Lake CPU just yet. Still, at some point this will no doubt change, and making that change possible will be ongoing research, largely in the form of extensive benchmarks, and today we're getting things started with a platform benchmark. The point of this content is to see how Radeon GPUs perform with resizable bar enabled across multiple platforms. For testing, we'll be using the Ryzen 9 5950X and 3950X, along with the Intel Core i9 12900K and 10900K. All four CPUs will be tested using the Radeon RX 6800 XT, as well as the more entry level RX 6600. Now unfortunately I have only been able to include half a dozen games in the testing, as each game requires dozens upon dozens of benchmark passes. In fact, this video required over 1400 benchmark runs. Now for the AMD system I'm using the MSI MPG X570S Carbon Max Wi-Fi with the latest BIOS version, which is 7D52V11. Uh, this board was used to test the Ryzen 9 5950X and Ryzen 9 3950X. Then for Intel, we have two test systems. The Core i9-12900K was tested using the MSI Z690 Unifier with BIOS version 7D28V11, and the Core i9-10900K with the ASUS ROG Strix Z590E, running the latest BIOS version, which is 1301. Okay, that's everything. Let's get into the data. Starting with the Assassin's Creed Valhalla data using the 5950X and 6800XT, we find strong gains of 11 to 12% across the three tester resolutions. Interestingly though, the RX 6600 saw no such gains, at least when paired with the 5950X. Here we're looking at no more than a 3% improvement, which was seen at 1440p. Switching to the Ryzen 9 3950X, the 6800XT with resizable bar enabled saw performance reduced at 1080p by 6% margin, while we saw no improvements at 1440p and 4K. That's really strange because with the RX 6600, with the rebar enabled, this boosted performance at 1080p by 7%, though we did only see a 3% gain at 1440p. Now these results are based on a three run average and I went back and checked the data several times, but for whatever reason, the 6800 XT went backwards at 1080p, while the 6600 saw a small performance uplift. Moving over to the Core i9-12900K with the 6800 XT, we once again find strong performance gains with resizable bar enabled, at least at 1080p and 1440p, where this PCIe feature boosted frame rates by up to 
But just as we saw with the 5950X, no performance gains were seen with the RX 6600. Then finally with the 10900K we're again looking at similar performance with or without rebar enabled. Though at 4K we did see up to a 6% boost for the 6800 XT, so that's not too bad. And when switching to the RX 6600 we find a similar situation to that of the 3950X. Performance is improved with rebar enabled at 1080p, this time to the tune of 8%, though again just 3% was seen at 1440p. Next we have Far Cry 6 and again I'll start with the 6800XT and 5950X pairing. In short there's really nothing to see here, resizable bar does nothing to change the performance at any of the tester resolutions, and the same was also true when using the RX 6600. Swapping the 5950X out for the 3950X saw similar results with the 6800XT, though we did see slightly better performance at 1080p with rebar disabled. The results went the other way with the RX 6600 which is interesting, at least at 1080p where rebar boosted performance by 3% with a more notable 6% increase to the 1% lows. Now with the 1200K the 6800XT was 4% faster at 1080p with resizable bar enabled, but that was the only performance improvement seen. And then with the RX 6600 we saw no performance change at either of the tested resolutions. The 10900K also saw no performance changes in any direction, and this was the case when testing with both the 6800 XT and RX 6600. Moving on to a Rainbow Six Siege Extraction, we see that the 5950X and 6800 XT pairing didn't really benefit from resize wheel bar with less than a 3% change in either direction, and it's the same story with the RX 6600. The 3950X also saw no changes to performance with rebar enabled, and this was true when testing with both the 6800 XT and RX 6600. Then we have the Core i9-1200K, which saw a small performance improvement at 1080p when using resizable bar, but no improvements were seen at either 1440p or 4K. And with the RX 6600 installed, we saw no benefit to using rebar in this title. Then just to be sure, I also ran the tests again with the Core i9-1900K, and found no performance using either the 6800 XT or RX 6600. Now Forza Horizon 5 is a game that's known to benefit greatly from the use of resizable bar, and we're certainly seeing that here with the 5950X and 6800XT combo, which sees up to a 29% performance improvement using the PCIe feature. The gains with the RX 6600 aren't nearly as impressive, though they are still very nice gains with up to a 16% improvement. Unfortunately though, for those of you rocking a Zen 2 or older CPU, the impressive gains just seen with Zen 3 aren't possible. Here the 3950X saw no performance improvement with the 6800 XT, which is a bit unexpected, and of course very disappointing. But what's baffling is the fact that the RX 6600 did see big performance gains with the 3950X, up to 21% seen at 1080p. I went back and tried again with the 6800 XT, but found the same thing, so I have no idea what is going on here. And then we see that the Core i9-12900K saw improvements across the board with the 6800 XT, up to 25% greater performance with rebar enabled, and a much welcomed 13% increase at 4K. The RX 6600 uplift wasn't quite as dramatic, but even so we still saw 14% more frames at 1080p. Sadly though, like the Ryzen 9 3950X, we find nothing for the Core i9-10900K when paired with the 6800 XT, not a single extra frame. But again, if we install the RX 6600, performance was boosted by up to 13%, it's very strange how the 6800XT didn't benefit from having rebar enabled with the 3950X and 10900K, but the RX 6600 did. The second last game we have to check the data out for is F1 2021, and once again we'll start with the 5950X and 6800XT combo. Looking at the 1080p data, we find that the average frame rate has improved by 10%, but we also see a slight hit to 1% lows. Now this is quite typical and we've seen this many times in the past, for some reason resizable bar hurts 1% lows for Radeon GPUs in this title. That said, at the higher resolutions it's not an issue and we're looking at an 8% improvement at 1440p. The RX 6600 also enjoyed a strong 13% performance boost at 1080p, though just a 4% increase was seen at 1440p. And once again we find no performance improvements with the Ryzen 9 3950X when using the Radeon RX 6800 XT. However, with the RX 6600 installed, we did see a 5% gain at 1080p, though nothing at 1440p. 
Jumping over to Intel with the Core i9-12900K, the 6800 XT was 10% faster with rebar enabled at 1080p, then just 6% faster at 1440p and a mere 3% faster at 4K. Then with the RX 6600 installed, we're seeing no more than a 4% improvement with rebar enabled. As was the case with the 3950X, we see no gains with the 10900K using the 6800 XT. Basically identical performance was seen at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. Then with the RX 6600, we're seeing a very mild 4% gain at 1080p and then nothing at 1440p. Last up, we have Cyberpunk 2077 and here we're looking at no benefit when using rebar with the 5950X and 6800 XT combo. The same was also true when using the RX 6600, which saw identical performance with and without resizable bar. It was a similar story with the 3950X. In fact, this older Ryzen 9 part was slightly slower at 1080p with rebar enabled. Despite that though, we did see a very mild 5% performance boost at 1080p with the RX 6600, though basically nothing at 1440p. And then jumping over to Intel with the Core i9-12900K, there is a small 5% improvement with the 6800 XT at 1080p and 1440p with nothing at 4K. The RX 6600 only saw up to a 3% improvement at 1080p with basically nothing at 1440p. And then with the 10900K, we saw a 3% improvement at 1080p using the 6800 XT, but nothing at 1440p and 4K, and the margins were very similar with the 6600. Okay, so we've just very quickly powered through 48 graphs with over 1400 data points. So if you're a bit confused, don't worry. I've collated all of that info into some easy to digest graphs. There are still two dozen of them, but they will help make sense of the data. So let's get into it. Here's a look at the Assassin's Creed Valhalla data using the 600 XT, and we see a pretty clear trend. Both the 5950X and 12900K enjoyed strong rebar performance gains at 1080p and 1440p, while performance remained the same for the 3950X and 10900K. The only anomaly being the 10900K 4K data, the 3950X on the other hand was consistently slow with rebar enabled, though for the most part the margins were insignificant. What's strange is the fact that the results are thrown on their head with the RX 6600 and don't even remotely resemble what was seen with the 6800 XT. The 5950X and 1200K really didn't benefit from enabling rebar at all with the 6600, seeing at best a 3% uplift, which isn't a perceivable performance improvement. The 10900K and 3950X on the other hand saw 7-8% to more frames rendered at 1080p, though the margins were reduced to basically nothing at 1440p. So Assassin's Creed Valhalla had some really strange results for us and they were really just all over the place. Far Cry 6 didn't benefit at all from using resizable bar and this was the case with all four tested CPUs. And the same was also true when using the Radeon RX 6600, so let's just move on. Like Far Cry 6, we see little to no improvement with Rainbow Six Siege Extraction for all CPUs tested. The biggest gain was under 5%. And it was the same story when using the RX 6600, so Rainbow Six Extraction does not benefit from enabling resizable bar. Now, Forza Horizon 5 does benefit massively from enabling resizable bar when using the right CPU and GPU combo. Of course, here we're only looking at Radeon GPUs, but even so, you still need the right CPU, and we saw no performance gains with the Ryzen 9 3950X and Core i9 10900K. Meanwhile, the 5950X was up to 29% faster and the 1200K 25% faster with rebar enabled using the 6800 XT. But as we saw with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the RX 6600 results are completely different to what we're seeing with the 6800 XT. This time in Forza Horizon 5, we see pretty strong gains from all CPUs at both 1080p and 1440p. In fact, the 3950X gained the most at 1080p as frame rates were boosted by 21%, and that's a massive performance uplift. But even the 10900K saw a 13% gain here, so rebar is working well with the RX 6600 in this title. F1 2021 enjoyed up to 10% performance gains with the 6800 XT, seen at 1080p with the 5950X and 12900K, while performance went nowhere with the 3950X and 10900K. Now, although the gains for the current generation CPUs dropped as the resolution was increased, the pattern remained the same, which was gains for the new CPUs with nothing for the previous generation models. Again, the RX 6600 results are quite different, and really it's only the 5950X that enjoyed a noteworthy performance boost, 
Though the older CPUs did much better with the RX 6600 opposed to the 6800 XT, at least at 1080p. Then we have the Cyberpunk 2077 data, which didn't really benefit from turning on rebar. At most, we're looking at about a 5% gain, so nothing to write home about. Performance did appear slightly more stable with the RX 6600, but again, no noteworthy performance gains here either. So that went pretty much as expected based on what I've seen recently from unrelated testing. Not that long ago, I did decide to update all of my CPU data with resizable bar enabled, at least you know, when supported, as it is a CPU slash platform feature. But I found when testing with older Intel 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th gen parts that the performance was, well, the performance uplift wasn't there for a lot of the games where we expected it to be. And in some instances, performance actually managed to go backwards, though we didn't see that much of that here admittedly. I did only test six games though, because feasibly that's all I could really do. But what this limited testing does show is that resizable bar performance is a bit all over the place. And while we already knew that from past testing, the results here are a bit different as this is the first time I've really looked at resizable bar performance across multiple CPUs. Previously, I benchmarked the Radeon RX 6800 with the Ryzen 9 5950X in 36 games and found that while the gains could be as high as 20%, there were also instances where performance dropped by as much as 10%, resulting in just a 3% uplift overall. I've also benchmarked the GeForce RTX 3080 in 20 games, with and without rebar enabled, and found gains as large as 11%, with drops as large as 10%, and this meant performance overall remained the same. But here we found that performance varies even more beyond just game support, as CPU slash platform support is also a major factor, and it would seem so too is the class of GPU used. It's not entirely unexpected that the CPU slash platform plays a key role, as support of these components is required, but merely supporting resizable bar doesn't guarantee it'll actually work, and we saw this a number of times with the Ryzen 9 3950X and Core i9 10900K. But we also found that testing with a single GPU like the Radeon RX 6800, which I've done previously, it's not a great method either, as it will only represent gains you'll see with that particular class of GPU when paired with a particular CPU. That said, in our small six game sample, the 6800 XT and 6600, they weren't miles apart overall. For example, with the 5950X, the 6800 XT was 9% faster with rebar enabled, while the 6600 was 6% faster. That said, there were individual games, such as Forza Horizon 5, where the 6800 XT was 29% faster with rebar enabled, and then just 16% faster with the 6600. So the performance margins can vary quite significantly on a per game basis. The more extreme you go with the differing GPU performance, so an extremely low end GPU opposed to a really high end GPU, the more significant the margins will become. The 6500 XT, for example, only sees very minuscule gains when enabling resizable bar, while the 6900 XT will see slightly larger gains than what was shown here with the 6800 XT. So keep that in mind when looking at resizable bar benchmarks. It also means claiming stuff like Radeon GPUs are almost 30% faster in Forza Horizon 4 with rebar enabled can be a bit misleading as you really need to specify the CPU and GPU combo. There's really so much more resizable bar benchmarking that I'd like to do, and unfortunately it's just simply not possible to cram all of the testing that I would like to do into a single video. And next I'd like to create an updated benchmark comparing two or maybe three Radeon GPUs across a massive range of games. Think 30, 40, maybe even 50 games depending on how we go. And then create a similar test to what's been done here, but of course using GeForce GPUs, and then that would probably be followed up by a big GeForce GPU benchmark. Though testing GeForce graphics cards with resizable bar enabled will probably be a massive undertaking as you ideally want to test the out of the box performance. So slot the card in, install a driver, enable resizable bar in the BIOS and get testing. But you also need to do a separate set of tests with rebar forced. So enable the support manually because in some games, Nvidia hasn't yet whitelisted the game, but there are performance benefits to be had. Not sure, a bit of a gray area there, that stuff we'll have to look into. So. Yeah, bit of thinking on that one, probably something I'll get to in a few weeks from now, depending on how much you guys enjoyed this video. And speaking of this video, that is pretty much gonna do it for this one. So hopefully you did find this testing interesting, bit of a different take on our resizable bar with Radeon GPUs. I found it interesting, so yeah, hopefully you guys did. 
And yeah, if you want to support this work, also become a Harbour Unbox community member, then you can do so over at Patreon or Floatplane. Links for those are in the video description. You get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly Q and A's, behind the scenes content, and Tim and I also do a monthly live stream, which you usually done towards the end of the month. So pretty good stuff there. If you're interested, certainly check it out. But if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video, especially if you made it all the way to the end, much appreciated. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.